Love is love. Love is love. Adi, yo. Fourth place unbound. Uh, this Tuesday, three days from now, will be five weeks since I had surgery on my collarbone. Uh, someone said, hey Ted, how's the collarbone? And I said, it's fine. This is five minutes into the race. They said, how many times have this been asked to you this weekend? In the hundreds or thousands of numbers of times? It's only hundreds, but it is very thoughtful. I'm, I'm thrilled that people are thinking of my well-being. Seriously, I am. That's why I made this entire video. I want to show you how I went from broken collarbone to fourth place at Unbound in less than five weeks. Now look, if you're sitting at home on the couch right now, you're laid up in bed with a broken collarbone, please seek out professional advice. I am not a medical professional. I'm a professional cyclist. I'm speaking from experience, so I know a thing or two about how to come back from injury, but there are much smarter people than I that can tell you how to do it. So let's walk through a timeline real quick. Sunday, May 2nd, boom, down I go in a crash. I didn't really describe the crash before, I'm going down a, a descent that I've probably ridden 40 or 50 times before. Steep right hand corner, it's hard pack with, with quite a bit of that loose marbly gravel on top. It is something of a recipe for crashing, however, I wasn't trying to take any undue risk. You know how sometimes you can relive a crash and you, you, you relive it in slow-mo? This was literally vertical to horizontal, just like that. So then I'm in the ER. I have two doctors who are willing to do surgery on me more than a week away. I go home with, with some sort of surgery set up, but then I link up with the good Dr. Barry of Peak Performance Medicine and Orthopedics in San Francisco. Dr. Barry is a cyclist, so he can empathize with my desire to come back sooner rather than later. He tells me that I can have surgery two days later on May 4th. So at that point, looking at a timeline, it is two weeks plus four days until Gravel Locos 150, an event that we'll talk about here shortly. And then it's four weeks and four days until Unbound Gravel, obviously an event that is keynote on my calendar. So, so am I hellbent on racing? Am I addicted to racing? Eh, no, I've been through this rodeo before. I've broken this collarbone twice. I've broken this collarbone twice. I've had surgery here once and now surgery here once as well. So now the week of May 4th, I have surgery. I then go for a couple walks with Hazel. I put her in the stroller and off we go. It's a couple days later that I go into the garage to, to pick up something and I see my bike patiently laying there and I think, I'm not in much pain right now. I've been out of the sling for as many days as since I had the surgery just to keep my, my mobility and uh, range of motion up. I go for a bike ride, go to the end of the road, I come back. I go further than that, I come back. I put Hazel's helmet on and off we go and we go on a 45 minute bike ride. That was awesome, that was four days after surgery. The next day I go on a four hour bike ride. Again, pain is my governor, I'm not worried about out doing damage because pain really is not there. After the surgery, I've literally gone from nine on the pain scale down to a two. So the next day, I have a one week follow up with Dr. Barry. This is the point at which we talk about calculated risk. He tells me that on average, a world tour cyclist who breaks their clavicle is gonna come back to the world tour in approximately 12 weeks. I was watching the Giro a lot during this time the Giro is like being thrown to the lions. The World Tour Peloton is just so dangerous. There's road furniture everywhere, the speed at which they have to race in order to remain competitive, it's so high. Gravel is competitive, but there's so many more controllables that you can be in charge of. You can control the room around you. You can control having a better line. You can control the speed at which you're gonna take a corner. You can, you're just in control of so many more variables. So while it's certainly a risk for me to go for a bike ride, it's one that I felt that I was in charge of and one that I could do safely. The point being, the day Dr. Barry told me that I could ride the trainer for an unlimited amount of time, I took to mean I could ride outdoors for an unlimited amount of time. And I went for a 100 mile ride. 
So this is the point at which I start my training for Gravel Locos and Unbound. I can do big volume, but I can't do intensity. My shoulder's still quite a bit swollen. So anytime I'm going that high intensity, my heart rate's really high, my whole shoulder feels, I can feel the edema. But I can do bigger and bigger rides. Over the course of the next 12 days, I think I did three centuries. I tried to pick up the intensity, but it wasn't too crazy. Next up, off we went to Hiko. Now I don't get anxious on the start line, but being that we had a little bit of precipitation possibly coming that day, being that I'm at that point two weeks, four days post-surgery, certainly the angst was a little bit high. To be honest, I haven't been that nervous on the start line in a very, very long time. And that's entirely related to the angst of controlling my risk for crashing. I wanted to race. I wanted that intensity back. I wanted to honor the race that I've helped put quite a bit of insight into with uh, the race director, Fabian. And so with some of that nervous energy and a dry start line, off we went. The collective camaraderie from the majority of the group made it a really nice welcome back ride. Like any gravel race, it was an ever diminishing field. We went from a thousand people to start to a hundred to 50 to 20 to just a dozen. Towards the end of the race, the skies did open up and it became a torrential downpour. I raced a bit aggressively, probably more aggressively than I otherwise would have if I were hunting for the win, but that goes back to this cram training that I'm after. I'm trying to ride hard, ride excessively hard, gain fitness that I struggled to find from training alone. Well, and I was dropped maybe 25, 30 miles to go. And I'm perfectly fine with that because I finished the day happy and healthy. Very important going in to have the confidence to unbound in Kansas. And so from there, I was back to Vermont to put the finishing touches on my training. In my mind, I'm putting lipstick on a pig at this point. I'm trying to make the most of a scenario, which is just a little bit busted, just like my collarbone. Shake, shake, shake. Shake, shake, shake. It's a shakeout ride. I don't often ride with a hydration pack, but when I do, it means I'm getting ready for Unbound. So this is also modern therapy. Uh, what, I am, oh wow, four weeks, literally today, I had surgery on this bad dog. Let's see, there it is, four weeks, four weeks of healing, and this is the kind of thing that they probably say I shouldn't do for therapy, but, Playing with my daughter is way more fun than not playing with my daughter. So, expedited healing. Perfect is the enemy of good. I can look at perfect training and try to pursue that, or I can just be content with good. And that's probably true for, for training in general. We have real lives on and off the bike. We have issues on and off the bike. We have work, we have family, we have so many things going on, so you can never have a perfect training routine. I should also point out that this is three weeks of really not restful sleep. I was tossing and turning. In fact, the only pain that I had was in bed. I could hang out with Hazel. I could do all sorts of normal things that you're supposed to do as a human being. I could be on a bike without pain. Literally the only pain that I had was when I was in bed. So it was three weeks of not very good sleep. Fast forward up to the final 10 days before the race and I went 10 days in the green on my whoop. It showed me that I was incredibly well recovered. I was paying attention to nutrition, to sleep, to rest, to not drinking an IPA every night. To be perfectly honest, I have never seen that in my year and a half of using Whoop. So I was thrilled going into Unbound. Just checked everything for the hundredth time. And now we go to Kansas. Well, let's roll. gravel races do. A big group is forever getting smaller.
cutting to the chase. We were a group of about mm, eight going into Little Egypt. That's about mile 95. From there, Pete stepped on the gas so that it was just five of us coming out of Little Egypt. The next 75 miles was a block headwind, so no one in our group of five was gonna go up the road, and we all just hoped that we wouldn't get a mechanical and be forced to drop out. Good, strong, equal turns from everybody in the group. This was pretty much a dream group to ride with. Respectful five riders each doing their part. Probably around about 25 miles to go, Pete put in an attack. At that point, Colin was dropped. You never know what's gonna happen on mile 175 of a race. I got back on terms with Ian and Lawrence while Pete was suffering some chain suck. Three final big rollers, the Ian and Lawrence duo dropped the hammer a bit more and then I went backwards. I really thought I could hold off Pete, but I was just empty at that point. Finale, my domestique for the final. I don't even know what. I can't see straight. So what are you going to take away from Unbound 2021? Uh, I'm psyched to have my fifth Unbound, to have the Thousand Mile Club, to uh, have, I, I, I'm, I'm going to safely guess that it's the fastest Thousand Mile Club membership. I'm going to take away from where you were five weeks ago. Cram training is a thing. I mean, that's what's hilarious. Five weeks ago, I if it was any other time of year, I probably would have tried for a comeback at a different pace, at a different rate. But five weeks, despite my doctor's suggestion that this might not be the safest move, uh, I'm, I'm thrilled with the timing to have been able to cram some training in and make this all work out really well.